Now let's move on to one of our main features. Emissions inventory menu provides the official emissions inventories of on-road and off-road mobile sources in California. This must be familiar to those who have used the AMPAC web database before. It provides the same information, but in a new user interface. You can also generate the same data with AMPAC PC application, but it would be computationally expensive. This web platform provides you with an easy access to pre-processed MPEG outputs. Using the form is pretty straightforward. First option, output has three buttons. First two options, on-road emissions and on-road emission rates, provides the pre-processed data from the latest MPEG 2017 model. It provides total emissions in short tons per day or average emission rates in grams per vehicle activity. Off-road emissions, the last option, provides the data from the latest off-road Orion model. The off-road used to be provided at a separate web tool but is now provided together with on-road here. Select one of the options. Can you see a yellow question mark icon over here? When you click this icon, you'll be able to see a dialogue with additional description about the associated item. Here you can see the information about uh, the underlying models. You can click cross mark over here or press escape key on your keyboard to close it. Next is reason type. You can choose the geographical unit of your output data from the smallest area unit sub-area to county, metropolitan, planning organization, air district, air basin, and up to statewide level. Once you choose the reason type, you can select reason on the map in the below. If you change the region type, the map also changes accordingly. Let's choose sub-area for now. You can select the area from the pull-down menu over here too. Or you can type a few characters in the form and choose the area you want either by clicking with your mouse or pressing enter. If you find the map take too much space on your screen, you can close it using this map icon on the right hand side. Next is calendar year. You can choose from 2000 uh, to 2050 either by clicking or using your keyboard. Next is season. You can choose annual, summer, or winter. Next is vehicle category. You can choose MFEC 2011 vehicle categories or MFEC 2007. If you click this help icon, you can find detailed vehicle definition types. This column shows MFEC 2011 category. This column shows in fact, 2007 category. In the form, you can do deselect all and select all, or you can choose just some of the vehicle types you want, like this. Let's just do select all. Next is model year. It is either aggregate or by model year. Selecting model ears can be done in two ways. The first way is to use multiple selection options uh, as in other menus, or you can also set a range using a slider bar over here. Just drag the beginning year and end year, or you can even type the ear in the form too. Let's select aggregate. Next is speed either aggregate or multiple selection. 
Next is fuel. It is the same as other menu. The last option is output unit. You can choose tons per operation day or tons per year. If you click the cell icon, you'll be able to see the number of operation days per year. MFAC produced emissions only in terms of tons per day. The day in, the, in this unit indicates a typical operation day. So the number of operation days per year varies by vehicle type and is usually less than 365 days. It has been often confusing to people how many operation days to multiply to convert the daily value to the annual. Now you can simply choose this option here. Now we are ready to push the summit button. The right hand side button lets you download the data in the comma separated value or CSV file. Uh, if you click the left hand side button, you can see the output in your browser. Now your request is nicely summarized here. If you click an item, it is copied to your clipboard in case you need to do a copy and paste the value. In the area below, you have an output table. Since it would be usually a large table, we added these filters that you can use to narrow down what you need from the output. You'll be able to see how columns change when you play with this filter like this. All the activities are gone. If I deselect this button, and this is pollutant, and this is this controls processes. So for example, you can choose just VMT and NOX and PM and running exhaust. So even with the large output, you can easily focus on what you need. There are a few icons on the table too. If you click this icon, the output table will be removed. This icon lets you download the data in CSV format. This icon will let you in the full screen mode and exit from full screen mode. This icon will make uh, the table a little more condensed. And if you click it again, it will be a little more relaxed by default. Just to provide a continuity in your work, if you select or change anything in the form, your selection is stored in the browser. Also, your last submission output is also stored in the browser if it is not bigger than what your browser allows, which is typically about 5 megabytes, as I said before. So you can always come back to the form to continue to your work. So for example, uh, if I just reload, you can see the same selection, right? So if you reload the website or go to other pages and come back, you still have the last form selection and also the output if you didn't change the selection. Before moving on to the next menus, how about trying the website on a smartphone? This is a browser's features to emulate small devices. The screen is set to a common smartphone display size. Now you can access the menu by touching the menu icon here. It provides the same functionality as in the desktop mode. As you can see, it's a little busy for a small icon, but it is not too bad, especially when the filters are used. So same as before, your request summary, filters, and the table. So if you use these filters, even on a small phone display, you can easily check out some important information from MFAC.